Hello, hello everyone. So, how was your lunch? Good? Super. <laughs> so, uh, today we are going to talk with you about passwords, biometry, uh, and some kind of signatures, digital. So, uh, let me introduce myself a bit. Uh, my name is Vasilika Klimova. I am in web development already 14 years. Last year, I'm work, uh, I work more as developer relations and startup. But uh, before I started as full stack developer, as PHP developer, then uh, interface developer like front end, uh, I worked with 3D area as well. So I got uh, GD badge, it's Google Developer Expert in Web Technologies. Hope to soon uh, get maybe in security as well. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Uh, just to know also a little bit about you, raise your hand if you work as backend or full stack developer. Okay, great, great. You are my audience today. Super. So our agenda, we, we will talk about uh, passwords and the state of passwords. We will talk about web uh standard and about some particular part of this pass keys and how uh, we can use all of this for our benefit. So this fr uh, first uh, of all, this is a story how, uh, how, much, how many websites we create always. So if you look at the uh, down there, then each hour we create about 10,000 new websites. Just can you imagine how, how many data could be there? It's not all websites they have registrations and login. Um, this uh, pipeline, but still, we have a lot of a lot of users on uh, on internet. And uh, have you seen something like this in Google Chrome? It checked how many you. It's my it's my case. Yeah, it was my case. So I know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, so the problem that people reuse their passwords a lot. And sometimes these passwords are very weak, like six letters. It was a standard for a lot of years in our website that you just put six uh, symbols and that's fine. Uh, also, uh, people quite often, they use uh, first names, they use name of company for their uh, company login. Uh, they use a different kind of uh, their personal data like date of birth, pets names and etc and all of it is not secure of course why because someone can know your pet name someone can know your i don't know uh favorite car um company car or something and um this cause a lot of breaches in security uh these rules were in my uh, previous company. Uh, I worked in FinTech and they were quite strict about this, uh, about passwords. And they asked us to change our password one time per three months, each three months. And uh, actually this is not a good practice now. now I would say that uh, we need to change our password only if it was weak at the beginning or if it was if it was found that it was some kind of breach with this password so it's uh, already in internet somehow hash of this so uh, these rules were quite uh, irritating 16 symbols i need to remember and i can't use my last three passwords so i need to remember three uh, not three but like okay new password with 16 numbers each time of three months, I need to remember it. And of course, you can uh, understand that at companies, sometimes people just put sticker for their new password on their laptop. And this is very secure, right? So it's all our issues. Let's now talk a little bit how does it work, this password system. I think if you work in backend, you already know, but again, not everyone in backend. So, uh, for example, you have some kind of password, then you try to uh, put it on website and then what's going on? You either go into a website, so you logged in or no. Uh, and when this process is going, uh, your password uh, at the first time when you do registration and you like save your password on, for this website, you, uh, it's, uh, 
the process uh, called that is using at this moment it's encryption so we encrypt somehow with algorithms this password and usually um, we don't store the original password on server we store only hash value after encryption and uh, the work of this encryption uh, it's like hash function called and uh, the result that's stored on database could be like this just example and when you try to log in onto website uh, you again you try to write your password and then it's again encrypted and it's checking uh, with the password that's stored on server so this should be a lot uh, the logic for most of the websites but what's going on uh, actually so there are a lot of uh, hackers in this world and they try to somehow to hack your passwords and, or they can um, go to different uh, if they found some hash values uh, somehow they can try to understand what uh, algorithm is used on this website, for example, and also they can uh, even create some uh, sometimes like dictionaries with uh, different hash values that were already like breached out. And uh, this table shows you how fast you can uh, hack passwords even with like 14 uh, sim symbols if they're all numbers. It's like instantly with the help of AI. So AI is very great tool to help us to code, to do some small things maybe, but at the same time, it's, it helps in malicious purpose as well. And um, in security area, people always need to be ahead of hackers, of course. So just think about it when you choose your next password, that it could be hacked with uh, web GPU sources, with AI sources very fast. So with AI era, I just want to conclude regarding AI that uh, brute force, this uh, method to hack your um, your password is just like uh, using uh, sources of um, resources of web GPU, for example, or graphic cards. And uh, it could be just like um, uh, the algorithms just checking, is it your, uh, the result it, um, or it's not your so uh, then also AI helps you with social engineering uh, but again in a bad way so hackers they can use now uh, not robots but like uh, real pages they can speak with you like real people and it's also a lot a lot of people in the world they uh, got this uh, this problem and they actually uh, gave their passwords in the end so when you when some bank calling you say something like oh no we need to know your password or some secure uh, words like uh, secret um, questions so some people especially aged people they sometimes give their passwords and uh, of course it's also about disinformation in uh, our world that there are a lot of um, uh, not only accounts but also articles that they are not uh, they're not uh, truth so we need to be careful and of course it will be much more new types of cyber attacks in future so all of this actually um, the reason of burnout and depression for some people because especially if you for example try to imagine you're a junior and juniors they sometimes think that oh now I can do my job why should I go to development right it's so hard for people in the beginning and uh, even for skilled people they can have like already a lot of years of experience but after this new challenges it could be also harder but when we see challenges it's always opportunity when lives give you lemons, you what do you need to do? You need to to create lemon art, right? So it's opportunity for all of us. It's opportunity for scientists to create new algorithms, even better that hackers can do um, hack, uh, hacking attacks very easy. So just a bit, a little bit to conclude for statistics. So. Um, uh, hacking breaches caused by uh, weak passwords. It's uh, 
about 81% in the world. So FIDA is an organization who are like front runners and they behind the Biothan protocol that are a standard that I will explain you later. And they uh, encourage people to avoid using passwords at all because a lot of a lot of problems comes from passwords so okay next step what can we do to avoid that uh, after uh, some situations with for example if you heard about linkedin breach that when even mark zuckerberg password was stolen because they used uh, i think a md5 protocol and it was hacked the LinkedIn uh, base somehow, and uh, people started to use salty algorithms to avoid the, the, this um, database with all stolen passwords. Uh, and uh, what's a salty algorithm? For example, you have password strawberry, and then on each website, you don't uh, hash only strawberry password, you also add some, uh, not random uh, thing, but salt, some um, some like a uh, string for each website, it could be different string, but the idea of hash function that if you even change one letter, like uh, from um, lowercase to um, uppercase, then it immediately creates absolutely new hash uh, value. So it will not be like one only symbol change, but the whole string will be changed. That's uh, the idea of hash functions. And for example, uh, yes, we use uh, here SHA-256 uh, protocol. Uh, it's much better already, but still I will also explain you about better algorithms even. So salted password will be look like this in the middle of the page and the results absolutely different. So it's how now a lot of websites uh, work with passwords. But let's go further. Uh, so this screen from YubiKey, uh, YubiKey uh, website, the company who are providing YubiKeys and uh, not only, and uh, there, this is their statistics. So if you use YubiKey, uh, it's uh, like a device that can uh, also work as a passkey. Uh, I will explain later what is it, but it's like a, um, it's something that we can use instead of password. And if you use this YubiKey, it will be like 0% that someone can hack you. If they did not uh, steal your YubiKey, then you're safe. Then uh, don't rely on uh, phones or even sometimes emails, uh, but phones especially. Uh, I hope that it's not the case for Luxembourg or European countries, but in some other countries. Uh, there are such a process that someone else can go to your provider and they just can take your phone number and log in uh, into some website or whatever using your phone number. So it's not your phone number anymore because it depends what country and what power behind uh, and how much the value, I would say. Uh, in the end. So be very careful with uh, keeping something uh, with uh, like connecting something to your phones. Emails may be a bit better. It's like 21% also if you use it as a second um, second factor or authentication authenticator, but also not the good one. So SMS is also related to phones, the same reason. And there are another uh, another uh, things that people use now, applications like uh, password generator app. I think you heard also about that. I'm using sometimes because some websites, they just like push you to use a special uh, password generator app. But also, uh, uh, for example, when you logged in with Google, they sometimes go, uh, say you go to our app like YouTube and we will show you uh, generated password. So it's application from their ecosystem. They don't rely on like Microsoft generator app or some other generator app. They rely on their own um, password or random generation uh, and password managers. So uh, password managers, it's something that, uh, that ke can keep your passwords. And um, for example, it could work locally and also it could work with cloud. It's very 
now it's very very uh, convenient uh, for example in the, um, in different ecosystem you have uh, their oven password managers for example in google chrome they use uh, google password manager if you work with apple they have icloud kitchen then also uh, windows has uh, a windows hello and one password is private company a lot of people use it uh and uh yeah sometimes for example i know about one password that if you don't don't want to trust some clouds you can just keep your database with all your passwords on your local like machine or your flashcard but uh ah yeah also you can uh encrypt this with some not encrypt but like um uh, put a password and uh, keep it safe but again it's about password so this password could be a problem as well so you need to think how it's better for you but um, what uh, what now in the world what we suggest to use more and more is biometrics so you already use it I, I guess a lot with your phones it's almost everywhere there's like face ID things uh, it's quite convenient, maybe not when you were with masks during COVID, uh, but still, uh, when you try to log in in web uh, using biometry, it will uh, the um, like window will look like this. You should not afraid that they like steal your data or something. They just like connect to a special chip on your uh, device to check is it your face or no. So nothing goes to this particular website. That's very important to understand. So web authentic standard, what, uh, what is it and what's the idea behind? Uh, actually, the standard uh, with us already since 2019. But in 2020-22, big companies decided that, yeah, we need to invest some time into this because this really a big problem now, passwords passwords uh, st stealing from people. So uh, how it works? Uh, Web Authent standard uh, encourage you to use biometry using pass keys. It's like special word pass keys instead of passwords. And um, now it's more convenient became because it can use uh, like password manager somehow with the cloud. So, and uh, you can um, store all your passwords in cloud and then when you need uh, get the password you can use for example your face ID now I work like this with my phone so it works very fast you don't need to remember anything you just use your face we will go um, uh, next uh, and speak about different like um, probability of uh, problems that could cause using biometric so uh, can we use this web uh standard already? Yes, of course. It's almost like 94, maybe now even bigger. I didn't check like now, but it's really everyone encourage you to use it now. And um, so what's behind this? It's uh, public key crypto cryptography is one of the famous for now. Um, how we uh, store uh, some information, how we encrypt information. It works with public key that it's very, um, how to say, transparent and accessible to everyone. You can uh, like share your public key, but private key is something that you have and no one else should see. It's stored sometimes on your like device. And um, so what we, um, need to know about using this in uh, pass keys that uh, all idea of pass keys it's that we don't use passwords at all it's behind this is this public key um, um, a public key um, cryptography algorithm and uh, we uh, all pass keys this stored on your device uh, secure but uh, also there was one problem with Apple's if you heard uh, that um, some M1 or maybe M2 as well, uh, Apple uh, laptops, that they have problem that they store somehow these passwords, not very secure. But um, as far as I understood with our team, we had uh, like a brainstorming, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, how to say, doesn't cause a problem for biometric. 
because biometry is stored on another chip, not near your operation system. And that's why you're protected because this bridge with storing passwords on Apple, you can read it in Google very easy. It's um, only for uh, storing real passwords when passwords encrypted and they're stored somewhere on your uh, operation system. So biome use biometry, it's even better. So uh, again, pass keys, what is it exactly? First thing, it's um, hardware security key. It looks like this small thing. Uh, it cost me about like 50 euros. It works with uh, uh, my laptop. It works with phone. Uh, you can put it into phone or you can uh, use an NFC. Uh, yes, this. Uh, I uh, forgot this name, NFC, how it's called. Uh, and uh, so you can even not plug in this. And it works with web authn, so it works, works with browsers as well. And they're different, but this one was, uh, I, I use it especially uh, to check how, we, how our demo, how our uh, application could work on browsers. So also it's fingerprint, it's facial recognition and uh, pin code. The difference pin, uh, between pin code and password, that pin code is something that's stored only on your laptop. It never goes to any website, and, uh, any servers. So it's uh, the difference between pin code. How does it look it again? Uh, if you're on laptop, the uh, like pop up, um, it's uh, built in in browser. In Chrome, it will look like this but they're quite similar between uh, different browsers and you can choose you see uh, uh, for example your password manager here or you can use your device and use biometry to log in into what web website uh, so on on mobile it can look like this because in my case i use face id because i don't have fingerprint on my phone and uh, on my laptop, um, not in browser, but somewhere it could lose, uh, look like this because it's fingerprinting. Uh, use cases. Actually, there are a lot of already uh, websites that they use it, but they sometimes don't use it obviously. So the algorithms of web browser and standard, they use it behind login somehow that you don't see. But uh, very obvious it was on Apple. Uh, that they even put like use pass keys to log in. Uh, GitHub, you see, sign in with a pass key. And by Binance, of course, it's like crypto, so uh, you need to be very, very secure in this area. So a lot of crypto websites, they decided to use it. Okay, now let's speak a little bit about some thoughts that come to your mind. Um, sometimes people think that fingerprint are not unique. Who thinks that they're unique? Okay, good. But some people so sometimes think that, oh, fingerprint, they can, they can copy. Of course, in movies, we saw a lot of times that people can like uh, do some things here and then like copy paste even without cutting it. But um, we are speaking about real fingerprints. So I want to share also a little bit news. Uh, in the beginning of this year, um, uh, University in New York, they uh, found out that, uh, so before people in crimi criminalistic, uh, they thought that uh, fingerprints are very unique because they could not find a person by only one finger. It was very hard because they didn't know sometimes what finger was it, what fingerprint for what finger. But uh, they used AI to help them somehow to find in a huge database of fingerprint to find some similarities be be between different fingerprints. And, you know, before, uh, when people tried to understand or some kind of programs before tried to understand uh, is it fingerprint belongs to the same person, uh, look at the third page here, a third picture here. So they looked only on patterns, so absolutely like similar uh, pictures small pictures of your fingerprint, but uh, AI found another way. They started to look at curves of your fingerprint and angles. So they are not absolutely unique pattern, but they very similar angles on your fingers. And this AI um, research has showed that they they found the same fingers, oh, not the same, different fingers of the same person. 
So it's already uh, huge and it's very, very useful in um, uh, to find different people if people need to find them uh, in this area. But uh, so what do you need to know that fingerprint, they're quite unique and um, people say that it's like 98 percent that uh, no one else can like if they did not copy your finger on purpose, like in movies, then your fingerprint is unique. Now face ID. Face ID is not is not accurate, people think. And uh, I was working in a company and um, it was 3D company where I got my 3D experience. So uh, they provide uh, 3D scanners. And actually they moved me to Luxembourg eight years ago. And uh, so they uh, had a scanner uh, a lot of years ago when I just joined the company. It was, I think, 2013. In front of doors, it was scanner that scanned my face, and sometimes it didn't recognize me. I was the same, but no. And uh, so now, uh, face recognition works much better. And regarding Apple, um, uh, it's from Apple website. Uh, they face ID technology. They say like it's 90% that you are safe. So only 10% of people can uh, hack your phone uh, with their face, like similarities could be found. But it's also quite big, um, uh, how to say, sec quite secure thing, uh, because again, you need to find someone similar with uh, someone similar to your face pe person. But passwords, it's just like could be human mistake to give it to someone or to, to have weak password or to reuse passwords. It's much worse. So your device was stolen. It's quite uh, it's one of the um, like uh, popular question when people think that okay, I got this UB key, but it was stolen. You always have different fallbacks. For now, I would I would be honest with you. On a lot of websites, uh, they still ask you to insert your password, but I saw also that they send you uh, like random uh, password just to go inside if you stole some of your important uh, like device or you forget your uh, email or whatever, they will send the letter to your email. But still, we, uh, we like uh, link to emails. Uh, so always use some uh, biometrics, some uh, hard uh, this, um, devices, but at the same time, use strong password as a fallback. And strong password, as I said, it's better like 16 um, symbols. Okay, quantum computer. Now I work in startups and once I got in startup and blockchain and once I got a message like, oh no, quantum computer already can hack like everything and your blockchain area is like in bad situation because uh, blocks and blockchain, they calculate it with hash functions. So everything could be hacked very easily. But we need to understand that uh, if you speak about a quantum computer and if it will be used in malicious purpose, then it could uh, rely not only to blockchain industry, but also government, banking, all our money and etc. etc. insurance and whatever assets. So quantum computer looks uh, like on the picture. It's a powerful computer that can very fast to hack something and also to research something, of course, if, if we use it in proper um, go for proper goals. So we need to understand that this problem um, not nowadays problem because for now quantum computers they are not used by uh, regular people they use for research by big companies usually and um, but maybe in future it will be more accessible for us uh, and what we can do with this actually uh, already there are some algorithms that um, current quantum computers they can't hack it they need to it, they can maybe hack it, but they need a lot of time, like a lot of years to hack uh, current algorithms. So uh, this is just statistics of different algorithms. And I need to explain you that MD5 already uh, showed that it's um, not good to use because a lot of um, tables, like a lot of rainbow tables, dictionaries with your stolen passwords, with your hashes, predefined hashes and etc. 
so for example, in our company in Kadena, we use Blake, Blake second uh, version, but uh, a lot of people use SHA. Uh, and uh, if we speak about quantum resistant protocols, then SHA-2 and SHA-3, they quite good. You can use them. Uh, so key points from all that I explained for now. So um, use uh, hardware security key. It doesn't matter like what company is not so important. Choose what you like more, but it's the best option. Uh, then fingerprint. It's also your good option if you don't don't want to buy some devices. Fa then goes next uh, face ID. Of course, use password managers and multi-factor authentication. So use different ways to log in into something. Some even websites with when they're related to money or huge assets like wealth people, uh, you can um, do several devices to do some like kind of big transactions. It can secure you, not only one device. Uh, and uh, always use strong password as a fallback. Okay, the last part of my talk is UX part. So how we actually use it and where. I will uh, demo uh, our use case on our company, how we use it. And uh, you know that in blockchain, actually raise please your hand if you ever had Leo, like crypto wallets or whatever. If you ever had something in this blockchain. Okay, just interesting to know. And uh, then you saw something like this, mnemonic phrases, like 12 words that you need to keep safe. And it's also irritating. So it's not bored, but it's not easy to keep all these things, especially when you don't have like password manager. You need to remember where do you put it and it should not be obvious file on your desktop. So uh, also you need to store private key, right? And uh, this, this, all of this were a lot of pain for us. And in my company, we created this spire key just at the beginning of this year, we were experimenting how to use web and protocol. If you want to check it's demo app, so no money involved. <laughs> so um, you can log in and later if we have time, for now we have time. I also will show some fun things that you can do with signatures there, if you will join me. So, uh, you can go into website, but I will show you uh, how it works with a um, screenshot. It will be just faster. And then I will show you real demo. So everyone scanned who wanted. Okay, so let's go. Uh, at the beginning, you will see something like this. It just demo up, specially prepared. Um, um, the picture now prepared just for this event. So. Uh, when you uh, want, will look at this, you uh, look at the application where you need to log in. So uh, if you want to get this like uh, digital asset, this picture, nice uh, as a memory that you visited this event, you need to log in with WebAuth and our technology. So we did it as simple as it could be. So what do you see? If you go to the, to the link, you can uh, try this experience with me. So it will ask you, do you want to like to create? Firstly, it's ask your questions, right? Because we can't just like create something if you don't understand what are you doing. So feedback is very important in user experience. I work in developer experience team, so for us it's very important. And also you can give me feedback about your experience with this demo app later. It would be very valuable. So. Uh, uh, firstly, we ask, do you want to create? Okay, create. Then we create your account. It's like a wallet, but it's account uh, just to do some operations with your, uh, this, for example, digital asset. You can get this digital asset. And uh, then next step, uh, you need to pass this uh, registration with WebAuth and standard. And again, we see this. I did it from laptop screenshot, so it's a uh, laptop. If you do it for, with a mobile, it will be in the bottom, like I showed before. So then uh, I I used here mm, I I used here fingerprint, but in your case you can use Face ID. It's it it could be much faster. So uh, and then when you already click that yeah it's my Face ID, please uh, log in, and it will be created like a pair again that uh, okay you have this um, your face and it will be created pass key for this website and uh, then you can connect so it was registration process then you can connect 
and when you connect it, you can like get this asset. This is example just of login with WebAuthn protocol. And next step, what you can do when you log in, also with Web, WebAuthn. I promised you a little bit about signatures, but the idea, yes, about signatures that you can sign something and say that, yeah, I prove that. Not only on login level, not only on registration level, but also during some operation on your website. Remember, we quite often uh, asked, like, do we want uh, to change password? Okay, put your password again, your current password. But it could be your, again, biometry always. And this um, demo shows how you can do it. If you claim this, like, digital asset is NFT, all, like, digital pictures that shown that, if, for example, there is some owner on blockchain, uh, it's called NFT. So then if you sign, there are much more information what exactly you're signing, but the idea is the same. You again do the same process like with your face ID, with your fingerprint or with your YubiKey. So and then uh, you will see. Uh, then you will see uh, the list and uh, you it's like a record that, okay, I uh, minted this NFT. Minted is a verb to say that I got this NFT. Uh, and uh, you can go and check, okay, you were at this event, you really assigned that you were there. So that's the idea. It could be much more like uh, advanced how you exactly get this link, right? That someone gave you, that you really visited this event, that you didn't get it from someone. But um, okay, now I also will, uh, yeah, we have time. I also will show a demo how we can do something more with this, but a bit explain how it works. So. Behind Sparky uh, for login and signing, we use WebAuthn protocol. On language level, we used uh, TypeScript. Uh, we use uh, our blockchain cadena to store some data that you really signed, you're really owner of this like digital asset. And Pact is the name of our uh, smart contract language. Smart contract language and blockchain, it's like programming language to write something that will be stored on blockchain. So that's all. And uh, okay, now small demo with me. I will uh, go to website and again show you how does it work in my case. Okay, login to Mint. I will do it fast. Now I connect. I already had account, so I can edit it fast. Now I want to claim an FT. Now I need to sign it. And I can sign it, for example, with my fingerprint. And now I use my fingerprint. And now yeah, now it works. Uh, okay, I signed, so I claim this NFT. Now, uh, in blockchain, if you heard about like Ethereum, one of the popular blockchains, usually for each transaction or for each like thing that you want to store in blockchain, it's called transaction uh, operation. Uh, it usually uh, it lasts about fifteen minutes sometimes in our case it's like 30 seconds to one minute so it's like going going to blockchain it's not yes so fast like we work with database but the ideal blockchain is not store data because of gdpr it's not possible to stare use to 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 keep user data blockchain for other purpose i will explain a bit later so now i have this and it's what you're seeing so it's it's going it's going and then it will be but also we can create a proof Okay, I will try to create proof. It's a uh, proof that we visited the event. I will show how does it work. Uh, I will allow camera. And for example, I will try to do it with, make a photo. Oh my God, now we redirect it again. So I will make just a quick photo, just to demo with all of you. Ah, it's a bad camera, don't worry. <laughs> so I made a picture that I was here and I will put like title, Lika at Vox Days. Then I share this and who wants to join me to, to sign that we were here together? You just can just like uh, do the same process with me. Anyone, I will just wait a couple seconds. 
and I will see that some people join me. So the idea of blockchain that we work together with someone and for example, we are from different companies and we want to, to get things together. And we have different database in our companies, right? But when we want to work together, transparent and be like to trust each other, blockchain is good option. So I see that there are several people. Now I start signing. So I start this initiation that I was here and now I creating this digital asset that prove uh, that we were here together. So I start signing. Again, the same, uh, yeah, now I started sign and I'm waiting for signature. So these people that were here with me uh, and you can uh, see on your interface now that you can sign with me. So I'm waiting for signatures. Uh, I think I already can sign, but let's wait. Two more people. I don't know who is it, doesn't matter. <laughs> so, okay, everyone, almost everyone signed. I guess, uh, yeah, maybe let's try waiting for signatures. So I will try to update the page because the button should be that I can sign. Maybe I can just because of someone stuck here. Oh, now, good. So everyone signed, now I can sign again from my side. So I started the process, then I got the list of participants and now I prove that these participants really were there. So, but you can imagine it in business purpose for other things, it's just fun example. So I signed and now this NFT will be created. So again, it takes 30 minutes to one minute. And uh, if I go to dashboard, I maybe don't see it here. No, I see it here. So uh, then it will be picture here. We just need to wait a bit. So I have two minutes more. We'll come back to the presentation later. Maybe we will come back to this. So the idea that uh, signature, digital signatures, it simplifies our life to work with third part, party companies with without like intermediary, intermediaries. So uh, also blockchain and exactly this like demo example, it's open source. It's um, the idea of uh, all blockchain operations that they're immutable. So no one can delete something. You can absolutely trust this process and it's transparent. If you have access to see some transaction, you will see this. Of course, if you did not lose your devices to log in and uh, did not forget your uh, fallback password. So it could be used in different areas like real estate without notary, but the notary could be just blockchain because two, two people from different parts in the world can sign this at the same time. And, uh, but we need, of course, some like companies who maybe who can uh, prove digital that everything goes good with these uh, providers of something, but it's, it's all about the realization. This is just technology. And uh, of course, elections could be also transparent if you vote with this pub, uh, private and public keys encryption. That's amazing. So uh, here I put some links about WebAuthn. WebAuthn on the website about Web, uh, WebAuthn, you can find a lot of examples to um, how you can implement on your backend language. Java, Flutter, uh, PHP, whatever you use, Python. Um, and then Cadena Sparky link to, you can just Google, it's very easy. It's also open source. And then workshop from Google developers about how also to implement it like step by step. Conclusion. So we finally uh, going to the end. Passwords are for losers. Do you agree? Was I like, did they convince you? <laughs> so uh, use biometry, use password manager, use multi-factor uh, authentication. Uh, also small uh, tip, uh, when still some website ask you for secret uh, questions, 
try to remember some wrong answer to this secret question because some people can know your favorite pets or your previous uh, surname or something. Use something unique that only you know. And don't be afraid to use new technologies like web and standard or blockchain or whatever you want or AI. So, um, Filmus merci, thanks, danke uh, for listening to me. This is actually a QR code for form to give me feedback because I will always like to improve myself as a speaker. And please write to me what was clear, what was not clear, what did you like in the talk or what can I do better next time? So thank you very much.